Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Mm. So today we'll be talking about image segmentation. So uh, one thing is there that uh, I am not giving this uh, webinar live because uh, you know the, um, there's no point giving a live webinar when you don't have any um, people um, viewing your videos live so I just thought it's, it, this video is better catered to my students who would be watching this video later on so um, uh, you know relax chill watch the video at your own time uh, and I'd be uh, telling you a little bit about um, the new unit um, that is uh, image segmentation okay so uh, it's a pretty long chapter so I'd like to keep it very short and I'm going to give you some kind of um, some kind of assignment and that assignment is based on what I speak uh, based on all the syllabus that I cover I'll give you uh, an, an assignment to write notes on your own and uh, we would uh, if if this video becomes too long so we'd probably have uh, I'd probably upload another video later on in the evening uh, where we will um, solve some of these topics that we are covering today in Python Anaconda and I will give you a, a follow-up of a program as an assignment so you'd have to write notes on your own and also implement the same uh, in Python or any other language that you prefer I, I would I would I would prefer it say you do it in Python anyways so today's topic is on image segmentation now uh, these are topics that we're going to cover we're going to have an introduction and then we're going to have different types of uh, image segmentation or what is it how can you do image segmentation and uh, we would also um, uh, we'd also talk about the different types of uh, a few methods uh, and a few methods that we'll be discussing in detail is uh, how to detect edges so when you detect edges we are also segmenting an image and uh, we see the programming if possible and then uh, a few edge detection techniques as per with Sobel, Laplacian, um, Robertson's and then uh, thresholding. So these are the things that we'd see and there are a lot of things that we are not going to see because uh, we're in such an offline mode and uh, I think um, you know, delving to delve uh, to details of such um, to such entirety is I think a little not um, possible okay so uh, first let's begin so what do you understand by image segmentation so image segmentation bane ko kunai image ko objects like identify garera you know when we're trying to detect what are the objects in an image so if you if you run an algorithm that algorithm should be able to detect this is an this is a dog this is a house this is a cat so all of the various foreground and background objects in an image should be clearly detectable so that when you do that that is called image segmentation now image segmentation can when you do image segmentation the entire process can lead to a complete partition or it can lead to an incomplete or partial partition of the objects so then we term this um, segmentation sometimes become a complete segmentation and sometimes becomes a partial segmentation so complete as the name suggests is if you can identify each and every object on its own in an image then like you 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 are looking at me just now so if you can you know if you can detect me uh, and other objects in my room clearly then it becomes complete segmentation but if you cannot detect me and you submerge me with some other objects then that becomes a partial segmentation for your reference i have this image here uh this these images are images of segmentation so if you can identify objects in an image you know so these are image segment this method is called image segmentation how do you do it we're going to see it later on um, so if you can see here if you go further on what then is partial and what then is uh, complete segmentation uh, a complete segmentation would be when you have an image when you have an image and you divide it and you can 
डिवाइड दैट इमेज इनटू डिफरेंट ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड दोज ऑब्जेक्ट्स कवर ऑलमोस्ट ऑल ऑफ द रीजन ऑफ दैट इमेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ दिस इज योर पिक्चर एंड समा वी हैव बीन एबल टू सेगमेंट दिस टाइगर दिस बैरन लैंड दिस grassy land and this river and even this grassy land here so all of the different objects that make up this image are being clearly segmented so if this is the end result then this is called complete segmentation and if this is not the end result and you know we are able to perform somewhere in the middle then that is called a partial segmentation and a partial segmentation which do not correspond directly with the image object so you have segmented the image but it is it is not individual objects you know it is not directly mapping to individual objects um, for example here you go these are um, if this is an image and you were able to segment this using some algorithms and suddenly you have been able to segment the objects in an image but if you uh, look at it you know a little clearly you can see that even these trees and these bushes have been detected along with the house together as an object so this would be termed as a partial segmentation and not a complete segmentation um thabala bujhaun lagi arko image pan cha here you go so if in an image you are able to detect all the persons individually that make up the entire region of this image then this would be a complete segmentation this one but if you were to detect you did detect there was segmentation but you know these are not corresponding to the real people there it's it's showing you as one group so this is uh, a partial segmentation okay so uh, image segmentation is identifying all the objects in an image and when you do segmentations you can either have it's based on your need you know what is the the, the problem how deep do you need to identify the objects So as as soon as your solution is met, then you stop segmentation because you know uh, completely identifying all objects with hundred percent accuracy is uh, I think uh, asking a little too much. So when you you know you you have you do certain um, you solve problems. You have a problem and you want you want to find a solution. So when you reach a solution, you stop your segmentation. That is that is what we follow. So. Uh, you know if individual if complete segmentation is uh, problematic then we'd have to make do with uh, this kind of uh, partial segmentation and we add on a few other you know tips and tricks where we can make way way manage to take out individual objects so then the next question that comes to our mind is how to achieve image segmentation now इमेज सेगमेंटेशन ठीक है बुझे इमेज इमेज सेगमेंटेशन को एटा लेट्स टेक माई डॉटर्स बलून हिया इफ दिस इज एन इमेज एंड आई नीड वॉन्ट टू सेगमेंट दिस इमेज सो आई नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई ऑल दीज रेड बॉल्स विद द वाइट बैकग्राउंड आई मस्ट सेपरेट दिस इट मस्ट बिकम सेपरेट ऑब्जेक्ट सो यो इमेज सेगमेंटेशन भाई इमेज सेगमेंटेशन कर पार्शियल होद कंप्लीट होद ये सब ठीक है हाउ डू यू स्टार्ट अफ कसरी सो you know based on this pixel intensities we know that image is a we know that image is a gray image is a, um, a 2d matrix of uh, intensity values you right? know uh, black and white or gray scale image ho bane you only have uh, one matrix if it is a colored image you've got three matrix r g and b so je pani ho the pixel intensity ma tapaile image segmentation based on discontinuity garda huncha ya based on similarity garda huncha approach अप्रोच बने को सो डिस्कटिन्टी बने के हो डिस्कटिन्टी बने को वेन वन ऑब्जेक्ट इज देयर यू कंसिडर दिस बलून वेन वन ऑब्जेक्ट इज देयर यू टॉकिंग विद रेड 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 सर्कल एंड हाउ डू यू नो दिस इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट बिकॉज द बॉर्डर ऑफ दिस रेड सर्कल यो जिसको यह सर्कम फ्रेंस है यह सर्कल को रो व्हाइट बैकग्राउंड को यह जो बॉर्डर है बॉर्डर में ठूल डिस्कटिन्टी कलर को या इंटेन्सिटी को सो इफ यू कैन फाइंड आउट दिस दिस कंटिन्टी इफ यू डोट लुक लाइक मी और द पिक्सल फ्रंट अफ मी डज नट लुक लाइक मी इट्स कंप्लिटली डिफ्रेंट वैल्यू दर इज डिस्कटिन्टी इन द पिक्सल 
मेरो मेरो अगाडी पिक्सल सेम थियो भ्यालु सेम हुँदै गयो सेम हुँदै गयो यो बल को रेड 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 हुँदै गयो रेड हुँदै गयो हुँदै गयो व्हेन इट रिचेस द बोर्डर देन सडनली इट बिकम्स व्हाइट सो देयर इज अ डिसकन्टिन्युटी विथ विथ द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ द पिक्सल सो त्यो डिसकन्टिन्युटी छ भने वी कैन टेक दैट इनटू कंसीडरेशन एंड कंसीडर ओके आई हैव फाउंड एन ऑब्जेक्ट और यू कैन टेक द अदर वे राउ सिमिलरिटी मेरो छ्यौको पिक्सल सेम छ भने ही बिलोंग्स टु मी The moment मेरे छेऊ को पिक्सल इज नॉट लाइक मी देन हिट बिलोंग्स टू समर ग्रुप सो द सिमिलरिटी इज मोर अफ अ क्लस्टरिंग अप्रोच है डिस्कटिन्टी मीन्स फाइंडिंग चेंजेस अब्रप्ट चेंजेस तो तब को इमेज छ इमेज में कुने पिक्सल को बीच में धे अब्रप्ट चेंज भर इज वेरी हाई प्रोबेबिलिटी अफ फाइंडिंग अ डिफ्रेंट ऑब्जेक्ट ओके सो सीमिलरिटी अप्रोच इज तब आप जस्ते जस्ते पिक्सल खोज्ते जानो जहांसम आपको जस्ते पिक्सल पाँच दैट इज वन ऑब्जेक्ट सो वन अप्रोच अफ डुइंग इमेज सेगमेंटेशन इज थ्रू डिस्कटिन्टी ती अदर इज थ्रू सिमिलरिटी हाई देन हे यू गो सो यू नो यू कैन हेव इमेज सेगमेंटेशन्स एंड इट कैन बी बेस्ड अन डिस्कटिन्टी और इट कैन बी बेस्ड अन सिमिलरिटी एंड देर आर मेनी यू नो वेज अफ Achieving this, there are different methods and different algorithms. So, what are the different types? You know, take it, sir. Algorithms, sir. Who knows? Algorithm le discontinuity, khudde jahan dar sir. Who knows? Algorithm le similarity in pixel values, khudde jahan dar sir. So, different, different. Kuch ta khalke algorithms rozi sir. So, there are three families of algorithms. You know, uh, 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 generally. So, the first is. All uh, the global approaches such as thresholding. So we can do image segmentation using thresholding, pixel by pixel. Jansa, uh, you can do image segmentation by detecting edges. So this is called edge based edge based segmentation. So there are methods called edge based segmentation, and there are methods called thresholding, and then there are other methods called region based segmentation. So these are the three approaches that mm, we have uh, to segment images, but. Uh, you know for us we will be talking about the first two uh, not that the third one is uh, more difficult or easy than the second but it's going to carry on and it's going to be a very long um thing um syllabus so we're going to just stick to first and second okay so if you can see you can even uh, so your thresholding mane ko kyo you know previous summer slide mam thyo thresholding is see thresholding mane ko all the algorithm that that belong to the thresholding family Uh, they uh, segment images based on discontinuity they are looking for discontinuous pixels you know the algorithm is running they are checking every pixel by pixel pixel by pixel and they see where the maximum discontinuity is so say for example you're going to check um like i said this balloon so if you if you if you in the z dot so you're going to check where the discontinuity comes wherever the dis- discontinuity comes that becomes your um threshold then image based also is dependent on discontinuity region based is based on similarity so these are the different kinds of methods and um, here you go it's a, it's a, it's even clearer picture so segmentation techniques uh, some these are based on discontinuity edge is also based on discontinuity region is based on similarity they look for similarity but what are the different uh, thresholding techniques you have so there are um, global adaptive also okay then um clustering is again um, another kind of um image segmentation technique um, where uh, you know okay so and then then there is edge based so what are the different edge based techniques uh, edge detection gradient mode uh, laplacian active level region based okay so so these are the various methods that that you have uh, you have so you can segment images so uh, then now let's come directly to what is image segmentation fine so uh, before we begin what is image segmentation there is something we got to understand we got to understand aile maile bhani hale you know uh, image ko object khodda image ko object khodda hamile pixel ko discontinuity khodda cha so yo red circle yo red circle ko border With this white background, my discontinuity. Rato is transitioning to this white. This white is transitioning transitioning to this red. Or even for example, if you want to choose this here, this red and this white. 
So as soon as you find this edge here, your, your Rathoko edge here on the screen, there is a discontinuity in the pixel. This is this white value and this is red value. Which is a, so what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the change. So the algorithm is looking for the, this pixel here. It's white. It goes, it looks for this pixel. It's white. It's, it looks for this pixel. It's white. So the rate of change is zero. No rate of change, no rate of change, no rate of change. When you come to this border, the rate of change is very high. And then again, there's no rate of change, no rate of change, because again, red. So where is the greatest rate of change for pixel intensity? Is this edges, you know? So edge le pani object segmentation hodo raisa. The edge khodnu bane ko, yoda discontinuity khodnu, yoda greatest rate of change. White dekhi, red kaba boyo, so greatest rate of change. So we know rate of change khodne, maths ma hamil, li paila si kyo, is called Differentiation. So what is differentiation? What are derivatives? Derivatives bane ko rate of change. Then gradient bane ko kyo. So all of these things play a subtle role in finding edges. Because edges bane ko discontinuity ho, discontinuity bane ko maximum rate of change ho. Kaan se greatest change ho dai sa. Jaha sa bandha bisi change ho dai sa, pixel intensity ma, or ya color ma, that would be an edge and that could be a probable object. So that is the intention. So tiyo ganna lagi, hamile, gradient to derivatives ko help link sa. So let us just see what is gradients and derivatives quickly. Okay, fine. So, uh, here you go. What are gradients and derivatives? So, here you go. Gradient is, gradient is the derivative, gradient, what is gradient? Gradient is the derivative of a multivariable function. So again, I'm reading again. Gradient is a derivative of a multivariable function. So there are many things that is in question. So multivariable function when you kyo. And derivative when you go kyo. We've done it in maths. You've done it in maths. I've done it in maths. You know, basic high school maths, class 10 maths. So multivariable function when you see f of xy, where have we seen f of xy? f of xy, in class ma asti asti school lagda, we always said image is a 2D matrix and it is represented by a function f of xy that is x coordinate and this y coordinate. So this image function is a multivariable function because there are two variables. To, to identify an image, you need two variables. These two variables will help you identify an image. Or if you have f of x, y and z, this is a three variable function. If you have f of x only, if there is only one variable in a function f of x, it's a single variable f of x, y, it's a two variable, f of x, y, z is a three variable. So anything above one variable is called a multivariable. So what is a gradient? A gradient is a derivative of a multivariable function. So if you can take derivatives, if you can do differentiation of these multivariable functions, if you can, if you can, if you can have differentiation of this function, if you can have, if you can have a differentiation of this function, then that is collectively called your gradient. So gradient is a fancy way of saying derivative. Okay. So, I'm going to why derivative? Derivative is the rate of change. Rate of change 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 is the rate of change. Finding an edge. Sorry, someone was there. I don't know who was there. Okay, anyways. So, so what is an image? Image is a 2D function. We talked about this. Okay, so we said image is a 2D function, multivariable function, so gradient is a derivative of a multivariable function. So what is a, what is a multivariable function? Image is a multivariable function. It has two variables, X and Y. Here you go. This is an image. And if you see the pixel value of these image, this is what it looks like. Fine. And um, so there is an X and there is a Y and then there is some intensity values inside. And uh, if you were to plot this image as a three dimensional model, and here this is what it looks like this is your x values this is your y values and this is your gray values x y coordinate and the z represents your intensity values so as you go higher it becomes whiter as you go lower it becomes darker fine So then what is derivative? Now we know what is a multivariable function. Now multivariable function is any function that is more than one variable. An example is an image. What is a derivative? 
A derivative is rate of change. So whenever you want to find something that is changing, you know, so for example, this is a hill. If this is a hill, you want to find how, how steep is this hill compared to this X. You know, this, this is a straight road and you want to climb this hill. So, you know, you want to find how steep is this. So what do you do? You find the slope, rate of change. So how do you find the slope? We find between these two points. So how, st how steep is this line compared to this uh, X line? You know, for, compared to the straight line, how steep is this line? So if you were to find the steepness, then we'd find uh, between these two points, X1, Y1 and X2, Y2, we'd find what is the difference of Y, Y1 minus Y2. This is del y that will give you this height and what is the difference between x1 and x2 that will give you this distance in x direction so what is the distance in y direction and what is the distance in x direction if you divide y by x del y by del x that is called the rise by run then you get the rate of change that is perfectly fine but what happens if your hill becomes something like this how do you find how steep is it so if you were to follow the same manner you know, this black line is your hill and you want to follow the same manner you want to find how steep is this hill actually based with respect to x and if you take these two points and then you find what is the y height and you find what is the x height and if you divide them and you find the slope you know, the steepness so you would say this this hill is you know x you know some unit steep finding the m steep you know this this hill is m steep but we, are you being accurate are you being right is this correct is this correct because this is equation of a straight line and this is a right angle triangle and you found the steepness of this pink line you did not find the steepness of this hill instantaneous rate of change you did not find this instantaneous rate of change in this hill you found an approximate steepness of this hill so what if you were to find at every point at that point what is the rate of change what is how how is this y changing with respect to this x what is the output of this function with respect to the x so what if you could make these two points so small at smallest point here what is the rate of change smallest point here my microscopic points what what is the rate of change here so every x that we're increasing here look how how far if you're calculating the steepness between these two points x1 is here and x2 is here so far that is such a big jump what if this x1 and x2 were very small close to each other they were almost <coughs> um, going to zero so x is almost zero when x is almost zero at that point what is the change or how steep is this point how do you find that you know so how do you find such small changes so say for here you say there is two hills this hill and there's two hills so which is more steeper how do you find that so we cannot take such approximates so when you find the smallest point we can only draw a tangent and when we can find the slope of this tangent then we found this rate of change the instantaneous rate of change at that point when x is almost zero what is the steepness of the slope so that is when we find how do you find so that is the way we find uh, the answer to that would be we find derivatives differentiation is what calculus tells us that that we can find the smallest rate of change and here yeah, the derivative of a function you know, if that straight line was a function or that curve was a function so the derivative of the function what does it tell you it tells you the rate of change of a single variable x so derivative is written like this d by dx of fx so this is a function this is a straight line for us it could be an image so when you take the derivative of that image it tells you the rate of change for every pixel fine uh, this is the function fx and uh, you can also write the derivative as uh, this um, curved t. This notation, again, you can follow this, either the straight t or curved t, but this is called partial derivative. This is called derivative. This is partial derivative, fine. So now we know what is a gradient? Uh, what is a derivative? A derivative is finding the rate of change in uh, one direction, one variable. Fine. Now, Okay, now we said a gradient, previously we said when we find edges, we need to have, we need to know gradients and derivatives because gradients help us find edges, edges is sharp transitions, so gradient is a derivative of multivariable function, we said an image is a multivariable function, 
we know what a derivative is now let's go ahead but we have a problem so because what's the problem when you find calculus tells us that derivation tells you what derivation tells you the rate of change of a single variable but what's the problem I image is not a single variable a fun image function is not a single it is a two variable function it is not fx it is fx of y that's one point and the other is based on calculus the derivation or uh, the, the derivatives are found for continuous values you know values that are continuous but our image is a discrete set of random numbers our image is discrete you can see this image here it is not a continuous value but it has some values discrete values from 0 to 255 so there are two functions there are two problems basically derivatives is for continuous values and it is for single variable it finds rate of change fine that is what we want you know when you find edges we need to find the change the highest change but when you want to do that when you want to find the rate of change using derivatives for images we got a problem because the image is double variable and it is not continuous it's discrete so what do we do so when a function is multi multi-valued then we we find derivation not the what the not the normal derivation but we find partial derivations partial derivatives so partial differentiation so whenever you have a multi variable functions we perform partial derivatives okay so we form partial derivatives so the solution is a partial derivative so this is the way you write partial derivatives no more in a straight d it is a curve df of dx here dx tells you what uh, how is the function changing function just remember that's a hill the slope that we talked about so you know at what rate is the the function changing when x is changing so this is in the x direction so obviously you write so if you have a if you have a if you have a function that has x and y so you'll find partial derivatives as one how is the function changing with respect to x and the second you'll find how is the function changing with respect to y so that is the partial derivatives that you would perform for your first problem the first problem was we've got a multivariate functions how do you do that we do that we have solved that by doing um, partial derivatives so we'll take partial derivatives we'll somehow try and get partial derivative of an image and that will tell us the rate of change the greatest rate of change okay can't change there in this so we can call that an edge and hence we can segment that image so we'll find that partial derivative for both x and y okay uh, okay so that solves the problem now again why derivatives and gradients for detecting edges so why why are we taking derivatives and talking about gradients for detecting edges so with the help when you detect edges we we would have, we would have segmented an image why we already said edges are places of highest transition highest rate of change and derivatives are a tool to find the rate of change and uh, since derivatives of a single variable and since of uh, images is multivariable so we find partial derivatives and uh, collectively partial derivatives collectively uh, when you take derivatives of all the variables of a function they are known as gradients and gradients are vectors it has a magnitude and it also has a direction so gradient has a special quality <coughs> it not only tells you um, it not only tells you the magnitude magnitude the value of the gradient tells you how strong the change is and it, it not only tells you how strong the change is it also points to the direction where a more stronger change is there so finally when you find derivatives and gradients and you keep going you come to a point where there is maximum change so gradient is a vector it has magnitude how strong is the change and it also points you to the direction to go we'll see that so again why derivatives and gradients because of this now if this is an image and we were to segment this image so we'd have one segment here one black segment and one white segment we're supposed to identify these objects so if you take one single line here so this function is only one uh, f of x there's no y no so it's a single variable function and we were to plot this intensity curve here you'd go white means here highest point white so this here line is coming here white 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 so this is intensity number of pixels 
yeah coming here and suddenly there is a drop all the pixels are black 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 again again intensity rises so this is the intensity curve if we um if we manage to find where is the edges where are the greatest rate of change where is it changing where the pixel intensity is changing the most if you were able to find that using derivatives partial derivatives or single value single variable differentiations and if you plot that in a graph first derivative this is what would you know this this would this would be the outcome of that derivative of this image here you go come here come here come here and wherever there is a sharp change uh, it's negative because it's going from white to black the value is decreasing so there's a sharp change it is uh, it is it is indicated by this you know st steep maximum or minimum and again there is a stop there's a stark uh, uh, transition so this is yeah signified by this so when you take if you if you manage to take a derivative of this image then based on the derivative we can find out where the edges are so we know every peak minus maximum local maximum or local minimum these peaks would be our um, edges and this would form an object so from here to here we would make an object and from here to here one object and from here to here one object so that's the way we uh, will achieve image segmentation using edge detection methods we tend to detect edges or discontinuity in the intensity of the pixels by taking derivatives of the image. So here you go. The derivative of a function, the derivative of the function tells you the rate of change and the edge constitutes a high rate of change. So the derivative of a function, any function, see this is an image function. So the derivative of the image function tells you where is the highest change. So you think this is the highest change is here and there's the highest change of intensity here. Uh, and edge is a very high change so when we detect edges we can detect objects and when we detect objects we would have successfully segmented an image okay now uh, high school maths if we remember uh, the first derivative uh, is defined in calculus by this equation here uh, df of dx or single va single variable differentiation we're not talking multi multivariable we are not talking partial differentiation, so single value in one direction. Okay, a function is com composed of only x. Say. So we try to find the rate of change of the function f with respect to x. So uh, when when we when x changes, when x almost tends to zero. So for every small value, the smallest value of x, how is it affecting the function f? this is limit x tends to zero means mm, the smallest change in x that's that change is so small it's almost going to zero so this to shiano x ko change ma what effect is it having on this function so this, when you find when you find that this is the this is the formula and uh, so these are the different ways of writing them df of dx or f dash x these have different names i am forgetting okay this is Langrang's, right? Something like that. So, anyways, so then, uh, Ambroma ke babane image 2D cha, x pani cha, y pani cha. So, derivatives find gana lagi, amle yehi formula lagayara x ko lagi find garsa, yehi formula lagayara y ko lagi im garsa. You know, so it's y will be, all the x will be replaced by y. But this is, this der derivatives of a continuous functions. Like I said, the problem number two is, ours is a discrete random function. Ambro image is a discrete set of variables. So discrete una, every time we move one x, we are moving one pixel. One pixel means one unit. If you remember our, our computer graphics class, also whenever we move one unit, uh, we couldn't move x such that it is almost tending to zero, like in this case. Whenever we move one x, it has to be one pixel. So x is forever one. So then we replace del x by one in our case. And we get, we finally get, uh, we can solve this this continuous differentiation uh, we can almost uh, kind of approximate approximate you continuous variable ko lagi ho, differentiation Ela amile discrete d ko lagi or 1d ko lagi approximate garda we get this okay so ele ke bandai sa uh, 
अहिले एउटा पिक्सेल छ अनि त्यसलाई तपाईको पिछाडीको पिक्सेल x 1 सिद माइनस गर्दिनु सो दिस इज अ डिफरेंस सो दिस इज अ डिफरेंस कसो डिफरेंस इफ दिस इज द करेन्ट पिक्सेल माइनस इट विथ व्हिच वन पिक्सेल बिहाइंड यू ओके सो दैट्स योर डिफरेंस दैट्स एन एप्रोक्सिमेशन अफ दिस दिस डेरिवेटिव सो यू कैन फाइंड द डेरिवेटिव इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन फॉर डिस्क्रीट पिक्सेल्स फॉर डिस्क्रीट इमेजेस इफ यू माइनस इज अ सिंपल वे ऑफ लुकिंग इफ यू माइनस द प्रीवियस पिक्सेल विथ द करेन्ट पिक्सेल एंड दैट्स वे सो दिस इज कॉल्ड हियर यू गो previous pixel x minus 1 with the current pixel fx if you do that this is called backward difference if you uh, you know, negate the current pixel with the future pixel x plus 1 one ahead of you then that's called forward difference and if you could uh, you know find the difference between one previous pixel x minus 1 and one you know pixel ahead of you x plus 1 that will be the central difference now all of these are approximations of the of the this derivative yeah for continuous variables for images so we have somehow got this derivatives for discrete variables fine and most of the time most of the time the central difference is what it's uh, is um, um i know oh taken by most of the algorithm so most of the algorithms will consider this central difference not this backward not this forward they will take uh, one one pixel ahead of you and one pixel before you fine then uh, here you go again these are the formulas so for see for, for, for a function f of xy this is our image f of xy uh, if you want to take the gradient gradient is a, a symbol is inverse of delta you know so because because delta would be rate of change in the x direction Now the gradient is obviously the reverse delta. So this is the sign for gradient. So that means your image's gradient could not be any gradient. The key one is gradient. Its magnitude is only one. Its value is only one. Its direction is only one. Direction is one. It, the direction points you towards the greatest increase in the function. Function key rate of change. So I am letting you know the pixel by pixel. Zanda isa. The other pixel, the other pixel, zanda isa. So the gradient will tell us which direction to move in order to find the greatest change. That is the edge. So दुईटा भेरिएबल होना हमें डिफ्रेन्सिएसन कर सकते हैं वी हेव टू डू पार्सल डिफ्रेन्सिएसन सो पार्सल डिफ्रेन्सिएसन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स पार्सल डिफ्रेन्सिएसन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई सो वी गेट इट्स कैंड अफ अ वेक्टर यू कैन सी नो इवन इन मेट्रिस सो वॉट्स अ वेक्टर वेक्टर इज सिंगल रो अ सिंगल कॉलम ओके वन रो मेनी कॉलम्स वन कॉलम मेनी रोज सो एंड हाउ डू यू फाइंड द मैग्नेट्यूड अफ दिस वन यू फाइन द डिफ्रेन्सिएसन एक्स में डिफ्रेन्सिएसन वाई में सो डीवाई बाई डीएक्स कसरी खोज डिस्क्रिट इमेजेस को लगी बेस्ड अन एक्स ई इसी नो टेक द फर्स्ट पिक्सल वन पिक्सल अहेड अफ यू माइनस इट विथ वन पिक्सल बिहाइंड यू सो दैट सेंट्रल डिफ्रेंस डिफ्रेन्सिएसन है सो एक्स तेरी खोज वाई पे खोज तो ये ग्रेडिन को मैग्नेट्यूड ये ग्रेडिन को भैल्यू कति हो तो भाई द यू टेक दिस मॉड भैल्यू और यू नो नेगेटिव You cannot consider negative values, so tell you that you square the uh, whatever you get this derivative f of x plus square the f of y and you find the whole root. This is also a um, you know Pythagoras theorem. Finding the slope a square uh, c c equals to a uh, root over a square plus b square. So this is uh, you know almost a Pythagoras theorem. And you can also find direction. Direction is if you take the f of x whatever you calculate here divided by f of y and you find the tan inverse that will give you the direction so we'll see how this works now uh, so we've learned a lot okay we learned why how edges detect objects and how edges are a point of transition the maximum transition maximum rate of change so the rate of change khodna lagi differentiation is a very useful tool there we also saw the differentiation is for continuous variables and single variables and an image is a double variable and a, a multi variable and a discrete variable and continuous variable so we have to do partial differentiation and for all the variables and find the gradients of every pixel fine now like i said okay no so uh, gradient single single variable ko er function sa single variable ma so the single derivative is df of dx fine d by dx If there is a function of three variables, then you have to find 
uh, when you find ingredients when you do differentiation or when you find ingredient whatever whatever you'd like to you know call it uh, we have to have three derivatives one in the x one in the y and one in the z so the gradient of a multivariable function has a component in each direction fine now what is the special feature of a gradient is it points to the direction of the greatest increase now this you remember i'll give you an example later on so remember this gradient always points to the greatest increase in the function so our function is what intensity where is the change in intensity the most image ma where is the change of intensity the most that is a challenge so gradient tells you that he points you to the direction so it's very wise to find gradients of every intensity value in an image uh, and uh, so let's take an example now let us understand an example okay fine now i've i've taken this uh, from some book and uh, now here's a problem uh, we have we have a microwave oven and in the microwave we are going to um put some cake and microwave ma tapaiko uh, temperature dherai different huncha arka arka location ma microwave is big you know there is a box and there is a space 2d space 3d space so you take your cake and you put it in one location the temperature is something you take it in another location the temperature is something now the catch is here we have to take the cake in the shortest time you know to the place inside the microwave which is the hottest हाइएस्ट टेम्परेचर जहाँ सब भाई तातो जगह माइक्रोवेव ओवन में खोजन पर्यो इट्स अ कंटिन्स वेरिएबल कह अच्छा अच्छा खोज यू लुकिंग फर द हटेस्ट प्लेस इन द माइक्रोवेव एंड वेन यू फाइन द प्लेस यू कीप द केक देर इट गेट्स इट गेट्स कुक्ड एंड इट टेस्ट द बेस्ट सो द प्रॉब्लम यू ट्रेन टू अंडरस्टैंड विद एन एक्जापल इज अ माइक्रोवेव में वी ट्रेन टू फाइन द लोकेशन वेर इट्स द हटेस्ट सो दैट वी कैन कुक द बेस्ट सो लेट्स सी दिस विद uh here you go i'll just decrease this fine so this is a microwave fine so r we don't understand gradient now so what is the objective is to find the location with highest temperature for optimal cooking so where this guy this cake will taste the best so this is a microwave so the microwave is special microwave it has coordinates and it has gradients so for every coordinate just finding a gradient fine so you start off how do you start off You start off and you place this guy in a random location, and it's cooking. And when you place him in a coordinate, say you place him in a coordinate as three, five, and two. Okay, so three is x, and five is y. So x is kati right ma jani, y five is kati pichari jani, and two is z kati mati rakhni. So you are here, somewhere here, and eti bela in this coordinate the gradient is calculated. So the gradient is three, four, and five. Okay, just just an example. So when the coordinates are the current location measured on the x-axis, y-z axis, the gradient is the direction to move. Now the gradient is not coordinates. Remember, okay, you, we cannot confuse the gradient with the coordinates when we're talking about in 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 terms of images. Now uh, we placed him in the first location. X is three, y is five, z is two. Now gradient tells you three, four, and five. Now these are not coordinates. These are directions. telling us how high to go how right to go x is right how back to go this is y and how high to go this is z so it's telling us if you go you know if you take this trajectory you know uh, x theta y theta and z panch wala janda there is a certain angle that you're moving in so from this place there is a certain angle he's telling us to move in so this gradient tells you the trajectory the the, the line kata pati jani So if you follow the trajectory, you will reach maximum rate of change, maximum temperature. Tya cha man is gradiently. Ta tapai three, four, five. Jata cha. Tapai ko current location bada. Three right, four pichadi, five mathi. Ko direction ma you will follow. You will have one single path. Tapai three right hamal dhanu sakde na ni. So when you map these, you will have one trajectory. So the two two trajectory pichadi janus there you will have the highest temperature. So we will not go. Complete three, four, and five. You know the direction. What the video I'm leaving. Now, see the three, four, five. I'm leaving the direction video. It's about the Janu Banera. So it's about the. Come to Janza. You will not go fully. Come to Janza. You will come to a new point. Their new gradient is calculated. You know you'll have a new gradient, and you'll have the and it'll point you to the next best place to go. So from here you'll they'll point you to a new direction. Then before you take the whole step. 
अलग ती जान्छ न्यू पॉइंट में अगेन ग्रेडिएंट खोज्छ त्यो ग्रेडिएंटले फेरि एउटा डाइरेक्सन दिन्छ अलग ती जान्छ फेरि ग्रेडिएंट खोज्छ एन्ड लाइक वाइज इन सो फोर्थ आफ्टर मेनी इटरेशन्स द ग्रेडिएंट विल रिच ल्यान्ड यू टु अ प्लेस व्हिच इज द हटेस्ट लोकेशन इन दिस अफन एन्ड यू हैव कम्प्लिटेड योर टास्क नो व्हाई इज दिस एग्जांपल इम्पोर्टेन्ट इज व्हेन वी आर फाइंडिंग ग्रेडिएंट्स अफ इमेजेस मीन्स वी आर इभेन्चुअली गोइंग to the place where there is maximum change in pixel values so when we find the maximum change in pixel values we find the edges when we find the edges then we can you know start processing further of identifying objects so you see and once it finds the greatest change of once it finds the place with the hottest temperature then it is cooked and we are good to go Now here I have summarized this. Mm, I'll increase this. Okay, the derivative of a function when you take d by dx of a function, it tells you the rate of change. Fine. How fast or how you know how will the output change with the smallest change in input or x? And derivative tells you the rate of change. And gradient points to the direction of the greatest increase of the function. And edge constitutes a high rate of change. सो एज को हाई रेट अफ चेंज हो डेरिवेटिवले रेट अफ चेंज खोज ग्रेडिएंटली हाइएस्ट रेट अफ चेंज कह हो तैं देखा सो अभियली एज खोजन लगी डेरिवेटिव रेडिएंट दुटे चाहिए दैट्स वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू कंक्लूड फाइन नाउ लेट अस जस्ट सी एज डिटेक्शन नाउ देर आर मेनी काइंड अफ एज डिटेक्शन मेथड्स एज डिटेक्शन को डेरिवेटिव खोज् हो डेरिवेटिव खोजे एक्स डाइरेक्शन में खोज् वाई डाइरेक्शन में खोज् तेज को ग्रेडिएंट को मैग्नेट्यूड खोज् ग्रेडिएंट को मैग्नेट्यूड कसरी खोज् वी हर अडी सीन ग्रेडिएंट को मैग्नेट्यूड इसी खोज् यहाँ है पाइथोकर सीरम जस्त फर्स्ट डेरिवेशन स्क्वायर कर सेकेंड डेरिवेटिव वाई लाइट स्क्वायर कर अंडर रुट कर दैट इज द मैग्नेट्यूड डाइरेक्शन भी खोज्ता हो देन सो There are two major categories of edge detection. One is called the gradient, and the other is called the Laplacian. So gradient, when you go all fam, all algorithms that belong to the gradient gradient method, uh, is first order first order differentiation. So differentiation, there is a little bit. So first differentiation, guys, that is called first order. Till the other differentiation, guys, that is called second order. Till the other differentiation, guys, that is called third order. So calculus. So gradient algorithms are all first order differentiation, guys. The image lie first order differentiation. Got it? I mean, these are gradient methods of edge detection. You know, I mean, second order de differentiation. Got it? Go. You know, methods are Laplacian. So Laplacian is a second order derivative. Approximate. You know, I mean, the differentiation is for continuous variables. So discrete. Ma got it? Images. Ma got it? It's an approximation. So, second order approximation. Got it? I mean, second order differentiation approximation. Got it? I mean, it's called Laplacian method. First order. Mm, डिफ्रेन्सिएसन को एप्रोक्सिमेशन कर सको डिस्क्रिट इमेजेस में इट इज कल ग्रेडिंग मेथड्स फाइन सो हे यू गो सो दे इज एन एक्जापल दे इज अ ब्यूटिफुल गर्ल स्माइलिंग हे सो इफ यू टेक इफ यू फाइंड ग्रेडिएंट अफ एवरी पिक्सल मीन वेन यू फाइंडिंग ग्रेडिएंट मीन यू फाइंडिंग यू डूंग पार्सल डिफ्रेन्सिएसन अफ अ मल्टी वेरिएबल फंक्शन दिस इज अ मल्टी वेरिएबल फंक्शन दर इज एक्स एंड दर इज वाई सो ग्रेडिएंट लीन लगी मल्टी वेरिएबल फंक्शन यू मस्ट टेक Two differentiation for one for one variable, the other for other variable. So d by dx you take one, d by dy you take one. One is horizontally all the lines you can see. Okay, all horizontal lines are very uh, clear, and dy by dx all vertical lines are very clear. When you take dy by dx of an image, and then so now let's just see the different. Methods. So the first uh, method. Now you must understand one thing before I begin. This is these derivations. These derivations are linear combinations. It's only a linear combination. So how do you do linear combination? How do you do some operation on an image? So we've already seen that before in the image enhancement class, where we convolve an image with a filter. है ना इमेज इमेज में एट फिल्टर हालांकि फिल्टर हालांकि सम क्याकुलेसन कर कन्वल्यूशन वन सीग्नल विथ अनदर सीग्नल यू गेट अ थर्ड सीग्नल सो द फर्स्ट सीग्नल इज इमेज सेकेंड सीग्नल इज ए फिल्टर दिस इज ए इमेज दिस इज ए फिल्टर यू 
do some operation you get a third how much that's it called convolution so convolution was sum of products we've seen the linear sum of products so this that this, that's also linear and we can see differentiation is also linear so uh, we've found an approximate of we can find uh, uh, the approximation of uh, the uh, the continuous um, differentiation of multivariables functions multivariable function ko differentiation la approximate garna sakyo hamile haina ta tela kasari chai implement garni bhanda we can convolve convolution le garda huncha so we have again convolution a mask huncha euta image huncha we try to convolve these two mask so this is an image so we have a mask haina so that mask will convolve said 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 this arrow is a mask so this mask will convolve with the image and it will give me an output yeah okay so the output will be a differentiation so mask is to khalke hunu paryo mask is to khalke hunu paryo ki jab yo image the convolve hunda cha when this image is convoluted with the special filtered mask then the output would be a differentiation with respect to x fir arko filter huncha kernel that's called a kernel or a filter on a mask so it should, it should be such an approximation such a filter it should be you should have such a filter that when you convolve with this image it would give me an output that is some kind of an approximation of the partial differentiation with respect to y okay so this is an approximation of d by dx d by dy how by convolving or filter with this image so that's the way we going to do so that way is robertson he's got a 2 into 2 mask you know robertson came up with 2 into 2 mask and uh, This is a simple mask. So we are not going to how he got this in mathematical equations, but this is a two into two mask. He is uh, using the di diagonal directions and uh, to find d by dx, d by dx to find this one, to find this one, d f by dx. The image has x and y, so you have to find d a by dx and d by dy. So to find d by dx, Robertson said if to we could use this mask. mx mask x so if you take this mask and convolve if, with the original image so if the original image is convoluted with this mask you get d by dx of that image uh, uh, an approximation and if you take this mask and you convolve it with the uh, image you get a uh, approximation of d by df by dy so in case you are not understanding the term convolution of images Please go back to my image enhancement video or check any videos on online in Google anywhere on image convolution and what it is and uh, you know it, it will be pretty clear. So Robertson ko uh, filter is this. So if you use this filter and convolute it with the image, we get uh, d by dx and d by dy, fine. And we can also find the gradient magnitude. Now. There's another famous operator called Privet's operator. Uh, Privet's operator. Lepani. Uh, this is the x direction kernel, and this is the y direction kernel. So if you convolute this with your image, you get a dy dx in the x direction. If you convolute this with the image, you get d by dy of the in the, in the x direction. If you take the magnitude of both of this, how do you take the magnitudes? Square this, square this, add them up, and find this find the square root of both of this. That will be the magnitude at that pixel. Which pixel? The central pixel. So it's always the central pixel. This is the Powitz operator. Then this is the Sobel's operator. This is again another famous operator called Sobel operator. You'll find this operator in many of the libraries of many image processing libraries. The Sobel operator uh, is uh, uh, similar to Powitz operator, just that the values have been changed. There is more emphasis on Okay, so this I want to discuss this. Okay, I'll discuss this. Why it is coming here? Let's discuss one of them. So we will not discuss why everybody is coming, but we'll discuss just why this row is coming, and then why this row, why one zero one, and why one two one. So we'll take a Sobel operator and we'll see. So if you use this mask, we'd be performing, uh, we'd be approximating an image's uh, first derivative, well, d by dx in the x direction, d by dy in the y direction, and then we can find the magnitude. Then after Sobel, we've got 
See, so how do you find? See, gradient of that image, we find d by dx and we find d by dy. Then how do you find the magnitude? Strength of this, what is the value? When the jati maya d by dx karate, la square karyo, jati maya d by dy, you square it and then you find the square root. So that's the fine. That's the way. So if you remember that image we had, okay, so image could dx kojo, image could dy kojo, you do jana lai, magnitude kojo, combine karyo, and you do jana combine karyo, you ayo. So you can see how well the edges or how well this image has been segmented. You can see all the fingers, the eyes. So this image has somehow been segmented. You can see even these images, these objects have been segmented, these meshes here. So you can see how well this image has been segmented based on edge detection. So the edge detection, edge detection is not the only family of methods for image segmentation. But that is the family of methods we are discussing because edge detection when a high pass filter mom back with you we discussed high pass filters in image enhancement too so it's the same thing we've, we've discussed convolution and high pass filters low pass filters that is why we know the concept of convolution and filters so we are doing edge detection method now so just a continuation of a first class previous class so then that is the way we detect edges uh, there is one thing missing here is called the laplacian okay i couldn't have the lap oh this is laplace no so well so laplacian filters pan laplacian filters are key sabani these are all first derivative no so first differentiation so second order differentiation differentiation math differentiation got me laplacian uh, laplacian le tela approximate garcha laplacian le pani esari nai filter deko cha ta laplacian ko eudai filter matrai huncha x hudaina y hudaina he has one filter one solo dolo filter where the central pixel is um, minus 4 and all the uh, four neighbors are 1 and all the diagonal neighbors are 0 so if that is the arrangement of the kernel then that is called laplacian which if you convolve with the image you'll have a second order derivative representation of that image okay approximate representation of the any uh, edge detection evada method boy or thresholding is another method of another way of uh, segmenting images so thresholding bhaneko ke ho no evada certain value gray value cha ha ne evada certain gray value cha tyo gray value muni sapala white banaunu tyo gray value dekhi mathi sapala black banaunu so that when you look at that thresholding can be done only for very simple images so simple images ma uh, when you look at the histogram intensity of the gray levels we must find a certain uh, point above which we convert the image to black and below which we convert the image to uh, white so when you do that you know images get segmented for very simple images so we'll see that when we do programming and thresholding is something we have already discussed in image, image enhancement one right so convolution and filtering i've been discussed in image enhancement two thresholding is something i've discussed in image enhancement one and we taking both those um, knowledge of both those uh, image enhancement one and image enhancement two uh, so thresholding filters convolutions and we are studying image segmentation so it becomes simple yeah. now somehow we finish this so uh, now if you have understood somehow what i said then uh, you can go back you can have a look at both these videos yeah okay i've got this both these videos here uh so one explains the pirouette operator and pirouette operator explain matlai nagarera they also tell you what is convolution so this is a beautiful image i think stanford university go and the other is it tells you it doesn't tell you about how the sobel operator is formed but you know, the working of the sobel operator and once you see this it, you know more, many things will be clear so watch these two videos enjoy yourself if you've uh, you know understood what i said and you can pause the video watch these youtube videos and again after you finish these videos you can come back and continue my video okay for the ones who've not understood stick with me and you can visit these videos later on so if you haven't understood if you haven't understood clearly then carry on with me in this video so let's uh, control press okay so here 
I'm going to discuss a certain things with you. Okay, just so what is an image? Image is uh, we know it's a 2D function. Okay, image is a 2D function. Uh, this is the face, and his 2D function x and y, and this z is the intensity, uh, 3D representation of the image. And what is an edge? Since we're doing edge detection, so if this is an image and this is the line, now if you have to plot this line intensity, here you go. A A is white. It is very high. You know, A is high. And then when it comes to this edge here, there's a certain drop. It becomes black. Drop means it becomes black. And this black again becomes white. Again becomes black. So this intensity is going white again black. So by the time you reach here, you've reached the edge. As soon as you reach the edge, again there is a very high transition, high rate of change, and again becomes white. Okay, so you detect gunno convolution method chalara. You did you edges kasar detect gunni? That's the question. How do you detect? So, <coughs> so there's a Sobel filter. We've already seen the Sobel filter agipani. Now also we're seeing a Sobel filter. So your filter chalaya bani. Somehow, this is a derivative filter, first order derivative filter. Nani yellai tabli convolute kare bani image sida. You get a uh, first order approximation of that image. First sort order of derivative approximation of that image. So Sobel operator ko Sobel operator ko kisa? Dui tasa. Derivative in the x direction, derivative in the y direction. So here you go. Sobel operator derivative in the x direction, Sobel operator in derivative in the y direction. If you take this and uh, convolute it with the Sobel operator, the operator chalara yo pixel ma gari bani istu unsa. So x direction ma istu bhayo, y direction ma istu bhayo. Now your filter camera aaya tha and that's what i wanted to just tell you in short so that you get uh, you get a solid background knowledge and you can you know find out new things and you can move ahead and, and you can start processing and you can move ahead in computer visions because all of these are used in computer visions also so where did this come from so we already talked about this um, calculus ma derivative ko formula yo you know when this is a continuous variable when h x is tending to zero this and that and uh, how do you approximate this for us we take this change as one you know wherever there is change i'm going unit discrete so if we take everything as one and for example say we're finding for this 200 so you want to find f dash x you want to find the first derivative of this pixel so based on this formula if this becomes one then fx plus 1. So fx plus 1 money kathiyo? x square 210. So 210 minus, ya minus sa, you know, uh, fx minus 1, yoda minus 1 behind you, 10, divided by 2 is 100. So your pixel go, naya value is 100. That means you've taken the first order derivative for this pixel. It's an approximation, real the figure yo. Trela approximate kare yo boy formula. Abey isla tabli yo image me chalaya bani. At this point, two hundred ten minus ten bani mathe one pixel ahead of you, one pixel behind you. You take the difference. That is your value. That is the derivative value. So uh, that is the derivative. So this is called a central difference. So tabli yada mask bana hamne kosto unse the mask. Banna tabli zero pixel kala calculate karta sa. This is a two hundred pixel. 0 so 200 the kind there's no rule of 200 so you've kept this pixel 0 and you pixel topic of your pixel of a relay or a pixel pachadigo minus gone so one money go 210 bunny it remains the same when you do convolution we need to convolution mm, minus 1 into 210 also is the same 1 into 10 is also the same when you minus you get the same magnitude 100 ounce तर को बेला माइनस आउँछ प्लस आउँछ पछि स्क्वायर गर्दा त्यो माइनस साइन हटिहाल्छ सो 100 आउँछ सो अगाडीको र पिछाडीकोलाई माइनस 1 1 भनेको अगाडीको पिक्सेल जे छ र पछाडीको पिक्सेल जे छ इफ 200 हो 200 इज इन 0 200 ले 0 मा राखे भने 200 को अगाडी 210 1 छ माइनस 10 हैन सो दिस इज द पिक्सेल नाउ देन दिस इज द वेट गेम सो दिस इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग द Approximating the derivative, central derivative, central difference derivative. And what is this? Now, this is we're trying to give certain weights. So we're saying, look, you know, uh, your x axis, sir, x axis ma, uh, 
this this pixel this location should have the maximum weight when calculating your derivative and one above and one below should have uh, no weightage it should be the same because this is x direction but x direction my calculate got this the x direction calculate got the y direction should have no weight and you're trying to scale this uh, value by two so this is a vector this is a vector when you do vector multiplication it becomes one is to one so one into one is one 1 into 0 is 0, 1 into minus 1 is minus 1, then 2, let's take 2, 2 into 1 is 2, 2 into 0 is 0, 2 into minus 1 is minus 2, then 1, 1 into 1 is 1, 1 into 0 is 0, so then you get a super filter. So somehow he is trying to, uh, you know, for the x direction, when you take this derivative in the x direction, he is trying to negate, he's not trying to have any influence by the y direction, and he's trying to emphasize on the x direction. So that way is the filter is formed okay so see so this is the weight average and this is the x derivative then uh, so this is the way we find once you find uh, see this is the uh, filter for finding the x direction derivative this is the filter Sobel filter for finding y direction and um, then you take this filter and then you convolute this is called convolution operator you convolute with the image you find you get an approximation of df by dx of that image you take this filter, the, the, the derivative filter, SY of the Sobel, and you convolute it with the original image and you get uh, an approximation of the first order derivative of that image. Then finally, you can sum this up by finding the gradient of that function. Then we already know how to find the gradient of that function. Okay, so we'll just skip all this. It's all we have already discussed. So this is the gradient magnitude. How do you find the magnitude? You take the x direction, square it, plus y direction, square it, and you find the square root. Right, and here is a comparison of all the many filters that are available: Sobel, Perwitt, Cami, Roberts. Okay, this is Robertson's. And uh, now look at this. This is very interesting. Now see, this is intensity plot. Now um, there is pixels in the same color, and suddenly they, they shoot up the color, and then and there's a there's a very high change. There's a, there's a very high transition. And you can also see there's a lot of noise in this picture. These things are because of noises. You know, noises are very small. Now, when you're finding highest rate of change, remember, even noise is a rate of change. It's an outlier. Outlier means it shouldn't be there, it's there. So in a white background, if you've got black dots as noise, so that's also a very high rate of change. And if you are if you want to find an edge, that is also a high rate of change. So you make come into a problem when you're using edge detection for image segmentation that is this an edge or is this a noise you know so that is one problem that is always going to come up so so if this is an intensity plot into image and you use how do you find an edge we are just we already said you find an edge by using derivative filters so if you use to if you use a derivative filter a Sobel filter a Laplacian filter a, a, a Perwitt filter a Robertson filter any filter and you convolute it with an image then you get this but you can't see an image here you can't see an edge here how come we just said if you find derivative the derivative will find the edge very easily for us and then the highest peaks will the edge the the derivative plot will have a very high peak and that will be an edge but here you can see there is no peaks. You cannot find um, any peaks. This is because derivative filters are very prone to noise. So in the original figure, there was already a lot of noise. So the noise can have a very uh, negative impact on derivative image derivatives. Yeah. So derivative filters are sensitive to noise. Fine. So in so one solution to uh, finding edges is if your input has a lot of noise then you denoise it you apply smoothing filters now smoothing filters is something we've talked about in image enhancement one okay so averaging filter min max filter uh, so there are a lot of smoothing so smoothing filters they kick out noise like like reduce garcha. the noise that reduce got the edge bunny like reduce huncha. But uh, again, we have to enhance that edge later on. So one such noise reducing filter is Gaussian filter. You don't have to use Gaussian filter. You can use any low pass filters. We've done this in image enhancement. So original image like any low, low pass filter, chalavnos, convolve gornos, convolution gornos. When you do convolution, then uh, you've blurred that image. When you blur that image, noises have been reduced. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back to image enhancement video one. 
and see that and once the noises have been removed your image output will look something like this you can see while the image is still here after you denoise it with this uh, low pass filter you have the smooth image and when you find the derivative of this image now you can see the peak so now this derivative now we can confidently say that there is an edge here yeah so the step is input image line smoothening or no smoothening or uh, we use first order derivative and we find and if it is a first order derivative any peaks will tell us it is an edge so there are very kind many kinds of first order derivative filters sobel um, perwitt robertson okay the last one is the laplacian filter now the laplacian filter is a second order derivative so so these this is a graphical representation even this is so that fine so this is the formula for the first order derivation and the second order derivation is this formula okay so d square by dx square okay of that function here h with respect to h only sir so this becomes this you know the u formula on the i'm like kili kasi derivative function kasi banate so bulma zero the zero basi alio minus one you this is one this is one you know i'm discrete ma this is continuous ma so euda agadi ko minus euda pichadi ko euda agadi ko minus euda pichadi ko so there is the difference central difference you know agadi ko pichadi ko difference now this is the second order derivative so ille kasari garne how do you make a filter with this so here you can see x plus 1 this is continuous h o i'm like delta x is 1 so x plus 1 and x minus 1 so your current pixel ko your current pixel lai uh 1 euta pichadi ko pixel chaincha 1 euta agadi ko pixel chaincha your current pixel lai minus 2 chaincha so we can have minus 2 here 1 and 1 so that is a laplacian filter so once you have that filter and you convolve that with an image you would have a second order derivative of that image so here you go yeah so you minus 2 here rakhyo 1 here rakhyo 1 rakhyo so that's the way and you know now laplacian filter this see so 0 the 1 then minus 2 and 1 No, so that's 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 the one we saw. That's the filter map. Here, you know, one minus two and one. So if you view this as a uh, graph, you get minus one, minus two, uh, one minus two and one. So if you apply Laplacian filter here, then after denoising, because you know we have to denoise it, but we hear that denoising is not shown, and the output will be something like this. So the lap, the second order derivatives. finds two peaks in the greatest rate of change so the greatest rate of change in the image is here and if you if you apply this uh, laplacian second order derivative function then the output would be two peaks you know so this two peaks tells us that there is a greatest rate of change so we always find whenever this line crosses the zero this is the part that crosses the zero so the line of zero crossing is the highest rate of change Okay, so we always find okay the zero crossing yah cha so evada edge yah hola so that's the way we compute. Fine, so Laplacian filter is to sa minus two one minus two one cha so three by three kasari banana so three by three kasari banana so same way uh, Laplacian filter graphically looks something like this. Okay, And this is the hint. It graphically looks like this. So you can see uh, all these are okay shaded. Fine. So this could be one, 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 one. So four neighbors are one, 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 and the central pixel is very dark. So we can say it's my two minus two or minus four. So your Laplacian filter will look like this. So if you apply apply a Laplacian filter with smoothing and Laplacian filter without. Okay, so uh, then we we'll come back to the presentation. Please have a look at these videos. Enjoy yourself. And since it's become too long, uh, we will implement this these uh, 
edge detection techniques and threshold techniques and I will give you an assignment uh, in my next video probably I'll do it in the evening or tomorrow morning I'll put it up I'll let you know please have a look at it uh, till that time please install Anaconda uh, it is a open source software so if you install Anaconda we will practice some you know, programming will implement will take a few images will do uh, you know some crazy stuff and it will make your concepts a little more clear so till then see the videos see these two videos re, you know revisit my videos um, see google up some um, notes and text in google learn on your own install anaconda and when i tell you uh, about my next video we will just um, when i implement a few python codes thank you